Hey guys, I want to make a follow-up video to my Holiness Movement Deception video. I started looking at my YouTube analytics and I noticed that my Holiness Movement Deception video was my most, is my most watched video. It's also the video that I gained the most subscribers from, not that I have that many, I think I have like 19 at the time, at the time I made this video. But I also rewatched the video and I wanted to go through and just kind of um, address on some new things that the Lord has kind of, you know, brought to my attention and try to put the final nail into the coffin of the Holiness Movement. The reason that I have so much problem, such a problem with the Holiness Movement is because I was in that for 2.5 years, two and a half years, and it cost me my health. It literally n nearly killed me, you know, never being able to reach this state of sinless perfection that the leaders of that movement act or, or say that they have reached. Um, I, I want to do whatever I can in, in, that is possible to just get people out of that. And back to the gospel, back to what the Bible actually says into, into reality, because it, basically this is a cult of men who just proclaim that they have reached some state of sinless perfection and that if you don't do all these things and follow them or be like them, then you're going to hell. Basically taking the gospel and making it not even a, it's, it's a, not even the gospel, it's not good news, it's some new way to heaven. It, it's basically new age Christianity. And that's something that the Lord had revealed to me, and I'll get to that in just a second. I'm, I'm going to talk about that more in just a uh, second. But I wanted to, to point out something right here in Genesis 3 and show you how what they're teaching you in this sinless perfection cult in the holiness movement is basically the same thing that Adam and Eve were promised and, and, and told by Satan. Um, this is Genesis 3, and I really want to just focus not on verse 4 here, but on verse 5, and this is in the New International Version, and you can read this in any version you want if, if you prefer the King James. I actually prefer the King James, but I, this is it was on the NIV, and I'm not changing it. It was just here when I pulled it up, and it says the same thing, basically, so it's fine. So um, this is verse 5 right here, and this is what Satan was saying to Eve when, you know, in the Garden of Eden. And I'll get into more how this relates to the Holiness Movement in just a second, but I'm going to read this first. So this is what Satan said. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, obviously, he's speaking of eating the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the key to this is, is Satan told lies here, but he sprinkled just a hint of truth in. Not really truth, but deception. And everybody knows that the best lies sprinkle with just a little bit of truth. So yes, knowing good and evil is something that would be like God, because I believe what makes God God is that He is the only being, the only you know person that can know both all of good and all of evil, and never in his heart even want to or consider doing evil. It's just repulsive to him. It just would never enter into his heart to even want or contemplate doing it. And this is something that I believe only God can do. This is why I believe Satan told Adam and Eve to eat that, because he knew that only God could do this, so when they did this, they would sin, and then we know that the wages of sin is death. So, yeah, it, it's a deception, but basically what the holiness movement are telling you is that you can eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that you can know both good and evil, because everybody today knows good and evil, especially as you grow older, and they're saying that you can do that, and yeah, just always do good now. So basically, they're siding with Satan here, saying that, yeah, you can be just like God, that you can never choose to do evil, and, and, and you know, but, but know both. It's the same lie, the same type of mindset that the, the New Agers, the Illuminati type, the, the Satanists have, and, and a lot of the uh, like New Age Christian cults have, like the Christ Consciousness Cult, which is basically a marrying of Eastern philosophy, Eastern religions, with Christianity, basically saying that you can reach a state of divine perfection. These are some of the words that the Eastern, you know, re I keep wanting to say Eastern Orthodox, but that's that's not the same. Eastern religions, Eastern spirituality, Eastern, you know, like Hinduism, like Buddhism, stuff like that. But yeah, basically they teach the same thing, that through self-realization, through work of your own power, through whatever meditation and all these things, you can reach a state of Christ consciousness where you can be as perfect as Christ. And that's the same repackaged thing that the holiness movement is teaching. It's just New Age Christianity repackaged to be more appeasing to the Western world. And I, it it's, doesn't have all the like same type of rituals, but it's basically the same base lie that through your own work, through your own power, through your own abstaining, you can become you know, sinless and perfect like Christ. Because we know only Christ was sinless and perfect, who is the image of the invisible God. Only God is perfect like that. So yeah, it, it's the same lie that Satan told Adam and Eve. 
And I wanted to point that out. And, and you can dive more into it. You can look up more about Christ consciousness and how a lot of these New Age religions blend the two and, and how it's basically the same thing. It's just repackaged for, to be more appeasing to the older, the, the, some of the older generations, some of the younger generations. It really is just more appeasing to a westernized generation or a westernized culture, I mean. But um, I, I have videos talking about what makes God God, and I think that's very important to understand, and it will really help you understand and come out of the holiness movement when you start to understand what makes God God, and that, it, you know, by saying that you can reach that state of sinless perfection, you're basically saying that you can be just like God, that, that Satan was true, you know, or Satan was telling the truth right here. And, and that's, you know... We can't. That can't be possible, you know. Say, if if Satan's telling the truth, that means God's word's a lie. And um, if it's possible for us to know good and evil and never do evil, then that makes Satan accurate. That we can just be just like God, right? I mean, that if, if basically the holiness movement is true, then Satan told the truth here. Now, a lot of people will try to say, well, no, that was before we had the Helper in the Holy Spirit. But Adam and Eve were walking with God. So what do you mean they didn't have the Holy Spirit? They were walking with God. And I hear that a lot of time, a lot of the time where people will try to act like, well, since we have the helper now that the Holy Spirit, that things are different. But Abraham was the same. I mean, Abraham walked with God as well. Abraham was friends with God. Um, G I mean, Jesus. Peter walked with Jesus. And I, the reason I have these pulled up here is because Abraham... Oh, I mean, Adam and Eve walked with God, and then they made, they sinned. They made mistakes, they sinned. Abraham walked with God, and before he got saved, and I have two videos pulled up here, speaking of both about these topics, and if you want to watch them, uh, why the God of the Bible is the real God, this goes into what makes God God, that it's not just the miracles, the miracles are great, but what really makes God God is that he's good, that he never wants to do evil, that he has that loving nature, and that he never contemplates or ever even dreams of doing evil, that, that's what makes God God. And I also have, and I should have probably named this differently, Do You Really Trust Jesus? And this goes into the Genesis 12 through 20 kind of story where it repeats. Um, I mean, it's, it's the same thing that happens twice. And basically what happened was, in Genesis 12, um, Abraham lied about Sarah being his wife. He, he committed a sin by lying and being in fear and saying Sarah was not his, his wife. Then in Genesis 15... Abraham is declared righteous by God, by believing him, by faith. By faith, Abraham was declared righteous. The Lord's covenant with Abraham. <coughs> Excuse me. Then in uh, Genesis 20, Abraham commits the exact same sin again. He lies about Sarah being his wife. So Abraham, before he was saved, declared righteous by faith, committed the sin. And then after he was declared righteous by faith, committed the exact same sin. And he didn't lose his standing with God. He didn't lose his favor with God. The Lord was with him always. So it didn't change anything. Now, we shouldn't go sin, of course, and we shouldn't want to go sin. But the reality is is that it's, it's not about us wanting to. We just do it. It's not about us, you know, sinning or not. We, we, we sin. We are sinners in need of a Savior, and we have a Savior. And, and you just get a lot of different people that teach that, like, the gospel of grace and that I and other people are saying that, well, sin's great. Okay, let's go do it. No. It's not that sin's great. Let's go do it. It's that we do sin and we have a Savior that forgives us, you know, because of his, his the shedding of his blood. I mean, if you're wanting to go sin, it's the same thing as, as actually, you know, doing it. So, and, and anyone who's honest would, will admit that from time to time we want to go sin. <coughs> it could be something as simple as Somebody cut you off on the road, and you wanted to go beat them up. I mean, I've had examples of road rage. Most people have when somebody does something crazy and threatens your life in a car. That doesn't make it right. doesn't make it good. And I will preach against you shouldn't have that road rage. You shouldn't go and, you know, cuss them out or get mad and want to beat them up. But the reality is, inside we do. Sometimes we have self-control and we don't do it. Sometimes we lack self-control and we give in. And this is, the, like... This is what the Holiness Movement just doesn't understand, or, or they do understand and don't care, that it's the inside of the heart that has to be changed only through the Holy Spirit, and that 
the flesh battles against that, and at times we give in, and it is willful sin. But we have an advocate with the Father. And I'll get to that verse in just a minute. But I just wanted to point out this right here, just to show you. I, I wanted to make a final video to show you and put the nail in the coffin of the holiness movement, of the sinless perfection movements. I know a lot of these little things are slipping into even into people who don't claim to be sinless perfectionists. They'll kind of tongue in cheek say they're not sinless perfectionists, but then they'll kind of act like it. They're double speaking. So I wanted to just show you these verses, and also, you know, talk about, you know, what God, what makes God, God. All right, and, and I, I wanted to pull up also that if Abraham walked with God. If Adam walked with God and then they sinned, and Jesus walked with, you know, I mean, Peter walked with Jesus, seeing the glory of, of Jesus on the mountain during the transfiguration, seeing the miracles happen where he healed the blind, heard the voice of the Father, you know, honoring the Son. If he did all this and then still denied Jesus three times, he was walking with God. I, I know a lot of people try to act like, well, since we have the Holy Spirit now, that means we can be sinlessly perfect. But these people were walking with God, and they still sinned. And it's not that we, we are happy that they sinned, and it's not that we want to go sin, but the reality is that we are the, the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There are stumbling blocks will come. And some people say, well... Yeah, but that still doesn't give an example of uh, somebody sinning after they have the Holy Spirit. Well, we'll have it right here. This is after the Holy Spirit was given. Peter sinned again by being a hypocrite and not eating with the Gentiles. You can go read these verses. That They're not perfect. No one's perfect but God. <clears throat> yes, we will be like God and be made perfect in union with Him during the resurrection. Or, you know, our resurrection, not Christ. You know, he already resurrected. You, got, you get what I mean. <laughs> During the regeneration, during, you know, when Christ returns. But, you know, until then, their stumbling blocks will come. And I have that pulled up here. Woe to the world because of these things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person whom they come through. You know, Jesus warns, if you're causing people to stumble, woe to you. That's bad. You should really be concerned. Don't go cause people to stumble. But, stumbling blocks will come. And First John to one tells us that my dear children I write to you to the uh, I'm sorry I'm going to read this over this is 1 John 2 1 my dear children I write this to you so that you will not sin but if anybody sins or does sin we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous one right here we have the advocate this is the point and this is the overarching point I want to make about the holiness movement is that they have a bloodless Gospel. Their gospel doesn't talk about the reason that Christ had to die. It talks about you can become like Christ. Go follow Christ. Go be just like him. But they don't. Then what's the point of the Christ shedding his blood? We know through the Old Testament, and I should have pulled up this verse, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And they just never talk about the blood that Christ shed for our sins to cover our sins. Like, this is the point of the gospel. Yes, Christ is our example, and you know the Bible talks about be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Yes, we should strive to do our best and be perfect, but the reality is, was we're not, and that's why Christ died. If he, if we could become sinlessly perfect through our own actions, why would Christ have to die? You could say, well, he died for your past sins, but that's baloney because every sin was future today. You know, Christ was in the past. Every sin is is a future sin now. So that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I, I, I know most of you who watch my videos already know this, and I'm ranting a little bit. But I, it, it really bothers me because it's just, this movement destroyed my health. It destroyed my mental health and my physical health, which I believe mental health and physical health are interlinked. So when one goes, the other will start to go. And it, it was worse than before I was a... Christian, if that tells you anything, and I, if you can go watch my testimonies, I have testimony videos on here. They're kind of, I don't know why it's not loading quick enough, but whatever. I have them on here. You can go down. They're down there. But and I have a third testimony video. I think some did I make that and post it? I don't remember if I posted that or not. Oh yeah, my yeah, right here, right here. I, I did. I made a part three, but I have a part one or two down here if it would actually load. Anyway, the point is, is I I want to battle against this because it, it's more destructive than being lost like if you're lost 
There's a reason why Christ said that prostitutes and tax collectors will enter the kingdom of heaven before the Pharisees. Because when you become self-righteous, you're worse off than a prostitute or a tax collector. You're harder to reach and harder for God when you have that pride. It's harder for... God can't come. He, he, he doesn't... I mean, He can come, but you have to... It, being proud is worse than being a prostitute in the eyes of God. Not because the sin is any, you know, worse or anything like that, but because when you're proud, you can't humble yourself and allow Christ to carry you in. It, when you're a prostitute, most of the time you're already humbled most because most people will hate you and think you're dirty and nasty. And you allow yourself to be carried in. All right, guys. That's about all I wanted to talk about. I, I kind of got passionate about this because I, I've had a lot of people comment on my holiness movement. It's still not loading here. I had a lot of people comment on my holiness, holiness movement deception video. <clears throat> and most of them say, well, you just love to sin. No, I don't love to sin. There's been times where, yes, yeah, sin was enjoyable. And everybody can admit that. Like, there's times where, yeah, it felt good to tell that person off. Yeah, it felt, you know. <laughs> but the thing is, is... I don't love to sin. I just do it. I'm just honest. I and I I believe people have been wrapped up into this delusion, thinking that someone in their family or some loved one or someone they know they idolize has become without sin, and it's just not the truth. It's just not the truth. When you come to the truth that is Christ and understand and and read His words, you, you'll understand that we're all sinners. We're all fallen short of the glory of God. Not, there's not one of us that has become perfected by anything we've done. And even with the Holy Spirit, even when we, even the people who walked directly with God side by side, they still sinned and stu sinned and stumbled. But the Lord always forgave them because they are His. They have been adopted into His family, and that's the point. Out points. I wanted to make. Alright guys, that's about it. God bless and take care.